Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today we're talking about gamer tech, wearables engineered for gamers. Joining us from Colombo, Sri Lanka, is the CEO and co-founder of Gamer Tech, Amila Patarana. Welcome, Amila. Thank you, Catherine. Nice to be on the show. All right, so tell us about GamerTech. GamerTech, uh, we founded in 2018, uh, just a year before the pandemic really started hitting us, or rather two years before the pandemic. Uh, me and the co-founder, Taraka De Silva, we both were passionate gamers. Uh, we were working for an organization called MS Holdings, uh, and MS Holdings gave us an opportunity to explore something that they never explored before. Uh, and what really happened was we went to the market, we started doing a lot of research to understand uh, what are the pain points gamers go through, um, including ourselves. And we realized that there were no dedicated wearables or apparel solutions built for gamers. Uh, there were four main areas that we identified. One was in terms of handheld. Uh, as you would notice, gamers need to have their hands in their peak condition to really perform at peak levels. And then the second one was around vision. Obviously, when you stay in front of a screen for a long time, you're going to deteriorate your vision. Third one was around uh, posture, because you also tend to compromise your posture when you, you know, really sit in front of a screen for a long time. You tend to be unconsciously slouching, uh, breaking your posture, leading to long-term repercussions. And the fourth one is around uh, non-communicable diseases related to bad lifestyle, uh, stemming from obesity. So out of these four problems that we identified when we did our secondary research, uh, we thought about solving for handheld, which we felt one of the biggest problems that, they, that the gamers were facing. And then the second one was around posture. And then also there was a sub-segment that we identified that a lot of gamers also tend to have uh, issues in terms of um, managing their wellness, and then also in terms of managing their body orders, things like that, because you tend to, you know, stress sweat a lot during gaming sessions. Um, so with that, we started developing uh, consumer problem statements. And then we also start developing solution profiles to match those consumer problems. So that's, we follow a very specific process. Uh, and this is all thanks to MS Holdings because what they've done in the past is that they've created an innovation center for people like us who enable us to join them as entrepreneurs and then work on projects that can be a future potential of MS if we are able to prove different milestones as we move forward. Uh, then by 2019, we've, we started working with an organization called One HP, who specialized in game health and wellness, uh, doing primary research in the US because we felt US was the market. Because you may ask why why not somewhere else like uh, India, China, which has bigger population closer to Sri Lanka, uh, and the reason for that is we also looked at what is the average revenue per user that uh, would spend on a product like this, and US seemed to be the highest. And we started doing our primary research throughout 2019, where we developed solution prototypes, tested in the market. We, just to give you perspective, we did about 600 screener surveys when we started the journey, then had like almost 60 one-on-one -on -one interviews. Then from those one-on-one -on -one interviews, we actually put down a panel that we were going to do product testing. And uh, we did multiple iterations of products for us to understand how different product solutions resonated with the gamers, whether it actually helped them improve performance or address their condition. And that's how we started the journey. Uh, so uh, if I'm to summarize Gamertech, there are three things that we do. One is boosting performance. We want to help gamers improve their performance. Second one is around also creating immersive experiences because we felt there's technology that we can use. And then the third one is around uh, managing their wellness. And, and why we want to do all this is because we feel there's a vacuum in the market at this point that we try to solve these problems with either hardware or ergonomic solutions, but there's not necessarily any dedicated solutions in the market at the moment that you can actually put on the gamer's body. And I feel like in traditional sports where you have very specific gear that's built for uh, those athletes, gamers are athletes, that we would like to give them solutions that's going to really help them uh, improve their gameplay. So that that was the reason for finding Gamertech and, and how the, the journey in a very short span of time. But yes, that's how we started Gamertech. All right, um, let's show the first video.
right. So tell us about that video. What what is being shown? Yes. Um, so we we built on multiple product solutions. So the first product that we we were hoping to bring to the market, which we'll be doing the announcement, it's been in the making for a while, uh, which we call the Magma Glove. Magma Glove. The whole idea was that when you are when you are playing a game, you need to have good hand dexterity. It means that you need to warm up quite rapidly for you to get your actions firming up. Magma Glove, the whole premise is that we are going to use a proprietary heating technology with compression to improve your circulation quite rapidly. So uh, we've identified the areas that we need to warm up, what's the best way to warm up, what's the temperature, as well as what's the level of compression we need to give to improve your circulation quite rapidly. So this glove is going to be a pre-game warm-up glove, as well as anyone who wants to use it during the game, you can definitely use it. Uh, we've also done quite a bit of research around the glove before we introduce it to the market. Uh, what we did was we also worked with uh, another doctor called Dr. Lindsay Miglio, and uh, we did product testing around using some of the gaming gold standards. So we used Aim Labs grid test to understand with the glove, without the glove, how a gamer would perform. And what we saw was there was about 30% improvement in terms of their actions per minute, as well as efficiency of how they were uh, using the uh, the mouse and the keyboard by using the glove. So yes, we are announcing the the glove in November at the Esports Awards. Uh, I will definitely share some of those details as we move forward. So it will start getting to commercialization from uh, January 2024, hopefully. All right, so I've actually had Dr. Lindsay Miglior on my show, Gamer Doc. So how did she help you develop your products? So, as Gamertech, we believe in working on with the experts within the industry. And we also looked at, at that point, who were the experts who had a good understanding, who's not, who's not just coming into the industry, but who also had a background in terms of physical therapy, who's a doctor in, in, her, or in, in her field, right? And that's how we connected with Dr. Lindsay. So she still consults with us. We work with her very closely on all of our products. What we did was we worked with her to design the testing protocols because no one has done a product like this before in the market, right? So we want to make sure that we just didn't do it from a physical therapy or a physiological point of view. We've done those testing as we started the, the project, but we also want to test it with certain protocols that meant it's going to be something meaningful to the gamer. So we worked with her, used AimLab's grid shot as an indicator to understand how they would improve their performance. And what we did was we did multiple testing with different gamers, professional gamers, as well as aspiring gamers over, over a course of a couple of months with the glove, without the glove, how they would perform. What we noticed was that there was a significant improvement in terms of their performance the moment they started wearing the glove. But obviously, it has a diminishing return over a longer period of time. But it really showed that when someone starts using the glove, it really gives the performance improvement that they need. And then it enables you to hold it for a longer period because usually when you look at both side of things, very specific gear is built to help athletes perform better, right? And perform better for a longer period. So it's the same premise that we are looking at. And what we notice with the testing we've done that you're actually able to improve your, uh, the, the performance and then also sustain it over a longer period of time. And that's why we believe this product would change how gamers would um, manage their performance as we move forward once we introduce it to the market. So you wear the glove before you play or do you wear it during play? So, so the glove has controls built in. So it gives you a pregame warm-up cycle, which is 12 minutes. It, heat, it gives a higher heat level, which lasts for 12 minutes. And then that improves your decision. So usually if you're a professional athlete, you take a couple of hours to warm up. You do practice matches. You do quite a bit of, you know, finger stretches, all these different exercises to warm you up because you need to have your muscles twitching at a much faster rate if you want to compete. So what this does is because of the way we've done the heating technology, it improves your circulation quite significantly, enabling you to have those actions per minute improving quite rapidly. So what you would take usually about, say, a couple of hours to warm up, you now you can do it in about, say, less than an hour. And then also do it quite safely because it gives you a sort of like an extra padded layer that gives you that comfort that you can continue for a long time. So you have a 12 minute pre-game warm-up cycle. And then there are two more different cycles that you can use during the game. 
One is for a one hour cycle at a lower, like a medium temperature level, and another one for a three hour cycle at a lower temperature level. So you feel comfortable. You also would notice that when you play at an arena or at a competition, the environment tends to get very cold, right? And sometimes when it's too cold, your fingers don't work the way it should. And here now you have an insulated environment, almost like a micro environment that enables you to have your hands warm up. And in that way, you're able to keep going for a longer period and not reduce your performance. Does this increase circulation in your hands? It does to a certain extent, uh, because what it does is usually if you look at compression and heating combined together, that gives you a better circulation than just using compression or heat in isolation. So that's why we combine those two uh, technologies together. So the Heating technology is an active heating technology, which we call the TFTR, which stands for thermal thin film, uh, th thin film thermal uh, regeneration. Uh, so that's a patent pending technology. What we've done is we've actually developed our proprietary heating technology, which technically can be applied across any part of the body, but we've done it in a way that it's going to be easier and comfortable for the gamers to use. And then also we use passive compression. Uh, you, you have seen passive compression shorts, t-shirts in the market. Again, similar similar premise, but we are doing passive compression at a certain level, which is not medical grade, but it's it's for more in terms of wellness side of things. Sure. So let's show the video of the glove. You know, I would think that it would also be kind of a fashion statement, that it's kind of cool to be wearing those gloves. What do you think about that? So we actually, we, we just didn't want to build something very functional, but also look very vanilla, right? So we actually want to build something that's going to resonate with the gaming culture, who would want to really wear it with pride, really, you know, show who they are. Uh, we have a new version coming out in November. That's what we're going to unveil. The new glove is actually going to have some really cool technologies built in, including some of the RGB lighting built into the glove itself. You would see it soon enough. Um, I think that's going to be even more cooler than what you see, what you saw here at this point. But uh, I think it's what we were discussing or rather what we were contemplating was, you know, how do we bring functionality as well as, you know, aesthetics to this product? Because we really want to make it a statement that gamers have passion gamers you know want to wear something that's going to really you know uh work well with their personality so that's how we looked at it uh we're going to have different versions of the gloves that's going to come in in the future with the different teams that we're working with and that's how we are sort of looking at taking it to market uh we have a phenomenal partner ecosystem as well who's who's working with us to take it to market and then really have some of those you know really differentiated designs to designs that's going to come in sure and i could definitely see that um, a team might like their logo on it or or that even for a particular game like Overwatch or League of Legends, that there could be um, branding um, yeah, yeah. by them. So is that what you are thinking about? Yeah, that's, that's somewhere definitely down the line. Uh, those are some of the discussions that's going on at this point. But different... Most of different teams, different games would have different versions of this glove that's going to come in with different functionalities, hopefully. Uh, sure. The vision is really to have like, you know, create a culture around a product like this. Uh, and, you know, I, I believe that it can really change the way people, how they're going to play games and really enjoy it uh, and really make it comfortable. You know, I think there might be even a version that would be only for PC. There might be a version only for console. Uh, but I think future is still a, still a bit of a mystery, but uh, there's quite a bit of uh, thoughts that we are working in the background. Sure. Let's show the next video with your next product. Amila, tell us about this one. Um, so we call this the body thermal management suit, which we call short form is BTM. Um, when we started our journey, we also realized like, so I, I'm a person who kind of suffer from hyperhidrosis because I sweat a little bit excessively. Um, and 
or to realize that gamers also go through you know similar conditions uh, and when you also like at a tournament you also tend to play for longer and you might not necessarily have the chance to you know change your outfit uh, you might have to wear the same same t-shirt we actually did research around this as well so what we found out from our research was that out of the population that we did the research almost 20 plus actually would wear a t-shirt for about 24 hours and then we had about another significant 18 plus percentage who would wear it for about almost 48 hours right now uh, that is maybe not the most hygiene way to do things but here we've designed a t-shirt that has multiple properties it has antimicrobial uh, then also what you call sweat uh, moisture wicking all those functionalities but it also has a smart polymer built in which is going to respond to your body temperature what this is going to do is that when you start really heating up when you start stress sweating it's going to absorb that energy into that polymer and then store that energy and then it's going to cool you down because now the energy is taken away as part of the uh, heating process and then when you start cooling down at a certain temperature it activates and then start you know re releasing that energy back it keeps you warm at the same time so it, it won't allow you to go you know get too uh, hot or get too cold at, at a given time so it has activation temperature that works on that uh, it's the same uh, polymer company that we worked with when tesla did the space uh, tesla space suit actually uh, and so we kind of used like different technologies uh, and this btm suit is very interesting because you can wear it for a longer period you don't feel like you know you're wearing something it's very lightweight it's made out of uh, also, it's made out of recycled plastic, ocean plastic. So it has a sustainability angle, plus it has a performance angle that we are working on. And um, we envision a future that almost all the esports teams are going to use this product because it's going to be built as an esports jersey. It's almost like a high-performance jersey for gamers, uh, professional athletes. And the reason for that is what you currently get in the market, yes, you have some really good products, but very less functionality. So we want to really bring that functionality performance. Again, as I said, Gamertech really stands for, you know, performance, experience, and wellness. So we really want to bring that performance piece into it. BTM falls under our advanced approval category. Uh, so anyone who wants to use a BTM, we can actually now start producing it. So we've done the product testing uh, and then the material uh, development as well. So it's now actually in a commercial stage. So we are hoping to get these products out to market in Q, Q1 2024 uh, with some of the partnership announcements that's coming up. So you can actually essentially provide the jerseys to anyone that is doing, that is playing esports and other yeah. and other sports even. But um, um, I think, um, so if you, if you look at some of the leading athletic or uh, or rather active brand the whole like you know, if you look at any traditional athlete typically your gaming time is about an hour if you are a, obviously if you're like an ultra marathon runner or whatever then it's a little bit longer but most of the sports are like an hour couple of hours right so your gear is kind of built to survive for that long but here what we realized was that active is not the not the route for us to go but really like you know build something that can help you to survive for like 48 hours at a stretch, you know, like, you know, you don't really have to think about, you know, because usually what happens is when you work out, what do you do? You change the clothes and you get into fresh set of clothes, right? Yeah. Right. It's like, you're going to have a peak. You're going to come down again. You're going to have another peak. You're going to come down again. How do you sort of normalize that and keep you going for the longest time is, is what BTM is really about. Sure. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so it's interesting that you have developed all of this and you're actually in Colombo, Sri Lanka. And I mean, it, it's a great, ex you're a great example of someone who can be anywhere in the world and make, you know, develop a product and then look at the world and, and pick global markets. Like you've, I met you in Chicago and yeah. I understand that you were actually in the United States um, going uh, to several cities. So yes. is, is that what you're doing now is, is, uh, tell us how you're marketing to the U S. Yeah. Um, so there are two components. It's like, I think first of all, like the broad organization that I'm attached to has enabled us, given us the tools that we need to work on projects like this. Right. If I was doing a typical startup, if I didn't have this backing from MS holding, 
biggest challenge would have been, you know, trying to find funds for the research, you know, trying to have like an ecosystem of experts who can help us develop some of these technologies. All the technologies that I've developed is actually due to the ecosystem that MAS has in terms of, and the commitment they've given in terms of research and innovation. Then in terms of business development, uh, I've always felt that, you know, um, connecting with people, uh, you know, and then really like, you know, trying to, you know, um, do work distance in a from a longer distance uh i never really thought about it as a challenge because i think we live in a day and era that there's like a lot of phenomenal tools i'm mean, like look at linkedin right it enables you to connect with anyone in the world if you're in, in a professional network so i really felt very comfortable with that process um and then we also like i literally traveled to us like at least three or four times a year right and spent a couple of weeks at each given time and maybe next day it will be much much longer uh, but what I also did was when we started this journey, I really started reaching out to people who, uh, whom I thought who would, who could add value. Uh, so I reached out to like people like, uh, I'm not too sure whether you're familiar with William, the professor Polis. Uh, so he's yeah. the person who wrote the book of esports. Um, so he's one of the first people who responded to me, which I'm very, very truly appreciative of. Uh, and he's like, Hey, you know, you're onto something interesting. Tell me more, more about it. And then, you know, I've been in touch with him since uh, 2018 and we built a relationship uh, then one of the first esports teams that we started working with was oxygen esports why because william co-founded that and through that i got an introduction and now we've been one of the uh, long-standing partners of oxygen esports uh, then with some of those connections then you kind of open up a network that was never accessible before and then we also went for like multiple events i've been to like pax east pax south uh then um gdc uh then some of the esports bar association events uh some of the tournaments we've been at you know uh, a call of duty major tournament uh we've been to a league of legend major uh, you know tournament so we've done quite a bit of different events uh really you know meeting people trying to find like-minded people who also saw the potential in what we are doing uh because when you start this journey not everyone's going to think you know this is something that's that's going to work well uh some you know are there for different reasons, but uh, I believe in building a genuine network, working with like-minded people to help us scale this, and and I think that's that's been a very rewarding and a and a very invigorating journey because I mean, like obviously, I've been running this for five years and we are still pre-commercial, but it's it's been a phenomenal journey because of the people who's involved in this industry, and I feel like gaming and esports industry, the people are a lot more connected, closer, uh, and and I don't think. An outsider can come easily, but if they come with something that's going to add value, I think then people are going to take you a little bit more serious. And I think that's how being able to manage that network and really uh, slowly, you know, understanding what else we can do, what that future is going to be. I understand there's a lot of global uh, conditions that's, that's currently in place, but I feel the future is going to be very ho hopeful. And I personally believe gaming and esports would really, you know, sort of replace entertainment uh and sports in a, to a great extent because people are going to you know be more engaged with you know virtual worlds in in time to come yeah you know it's interesting william collis who you mentioned the professor who yeah. wrote the book of esports he was my second guest on my show and that was back in 2020 july of 2020 or so and wow. what what's interesting is that you provide a great example for people in hawaii who were you know, we're really super remote, but you know, yeah. you're you're really far away from the United States, your target market. So Hawaii people should take a note from you in terms of what you can do. So let's show your website. And while we're showing it, why don't you tell us um, um, how people can uh, contact you and uh, how they can uh, get your product? So product will come into, um... We'll publish it uh, towards Q1 next year. Uh, the the website is getting an upgrade, so all the products will be available through the Gamertech website. At the moment, it's more of an informative site, but this is getting an upgrade. You should be able to purchase almost all the products that I spoke about through the Gamertech.gg website. You can contact me via amila at Gamertech.gg. That's my email address. And you also can connect me with via LinkedIn. It's amila.patrin on LinkedIn. Uh, I think those are the two platforms that would be easiest to get through to me. And uh, I, I look forward to hearing from all of you. 
All right, Emila, thank you so much. I'm really excited about your product and I can't wait to see all the gamers wearing it. Um, and thank you to our viewers uh, who joined us today. And in two weeks, my guest will be Michaela Frank. Uh, we'll be talking about networking in the industry and more. See you then.